I am very sorry and also very happy. Both. Sorry because I am late. But happy because you got the opportunity to sing the bhajans and also to meditate. This prayer, this meditation slowly will purify the environment. The ashrama, the temple is nothing but the total thought wave of the people, those who are visiting there. They are constantly thinking about God, about the spirituality, about the purity. That environment, that helps others. Whoever comes over there, you people sat over here, you meditated, you prayed, that you got the benefit surely. But don't think it is lost. It will be here in this atmosphere. Whoever will come afterwards, they will also get the same benefit. That's why when you go to Belur Mott, there are so many other temples like that, but the feeling is completely different. Even those who do not understand what is Belur Mott, when they are going there and sitting over there, after that they say, oh, it's a wonderful place of peace. So many hundreds of people. Constantly people are moving out in like that. But even then people get a peace and they like to go back again and again. The reason is because in the morning and the evening, the hundreds of monks and brahmacharins and the devotees, they'll be meditating and from years after years is going on. And this was possible with some of the young disciples of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And one of them, a very famous, is Shashi Maharaj, Ramakrishna Nandaji. We will be discussing about him today because his Tithi Puja, it's not his birthday, Tithi Puja, that is celebrated two days early. So we thought that instead of a regular Gita class today, we will discuss about this great soul. The Gita gives us the philosophy. And these are the people who practice that philosophy in their lives. So both are important. When you get a person who could live according to the advices of the Bhagavad Gita, so that is more and more important than the whatever the written over there. So this Shashi Maharaj, he was born in a place called Ichapur and now they call it Mayal Ichapur. It's not very far from Kamarpukura Jayarambati. The whole area that that time. So and now that particular that was very good for the Ramakrishna Mission Authority. In the beginning it was nothing. They were not having the money or any support. Then slowly, slowly, when they started getting some and the resources, they started purchasing all those birthplaces of the direct disciples. Almost all the places now they have purchased and now secured the temples, exhibitions, monks are there because they are very holy people. This I have not brought the picture and there are 16, but you have seen the picture. And if you search Ramakrishna Nandaji of Ramakrishna Mission, this young boy, that is very peculiar, he used to come to Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineshwar, but you won't talk to him. He'll be sitting in a corner and reading books. After a few days, Sri Ramakrishna inquired, hey, what you are doing over there? I am reading. What you are reading? Persian language. The Persian language? Why you are reading Persian language? Because I like to learn the language so that I can read the original verses of the Sufi religion. Because Sufi poets, Sufi religion mainly in, in the poetry they have expressed the poets and they were also the ascetics. So I like to read that original way. Why? Because very peculiarly, even Swami Vivekananda's brother also, in his memoirs, he has written, we never had the books, the spiritual books. The only book was easily available on spirituality or religion is the Bible. 
because the Christians they used to print it in thousands and to distribute that was only a Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad and all other books it was not available only few educated people they used to have some of the libraries they used to have so you can imagine the condition how it was in our only a few handful of people they used to talk about religion but in mass just on faith and belief and nothing else so this boy is he was born in a very very spiritual family in the Bhagavad Gita it says when the Arjuna is asking the question to uh, the Krishna you were telling that one should keep his mind on God but suppose he is keeping his mind on God and forgetting this world but after the death he and in that life if he fails to realize God and at the same time didn't enjoy anything of this world that he lose everything he could enjoy the world instead of striving for God realization is it not then Krishna told no Shuchi Nam Sri Matam Gehi Yoga Brashta Vijayati he will be surely this person who is trying to strive for spiritual realization if he fails to realize in this life he will be born in a family which is in that spiritual culture and of course they will be having some wealth to maintain themselves they will only be very very poor very poor family their whole thought goes for earning money and for maintenance so suchi nam sri matam sri means the wealth and suchi the culture the highest culture is spirituality his father isha chandra he was a great tantric scholar and he was not only that he was the court pandit in the pandit means the traditional way educated court pandit of that uh, belgachia the king so naturally they were highly respected people and he knew many of the things in the tantra he tried that some of the mantras on his son afterwards but it failed because tantras the all power goes to Kali and Sri Ramakrishna himself is the Kali that power the Shakti so it failed that will we can come to afterwards this boy when he was born over there he was growing up he was very intelligent all the time he has to be successful very bright student and that way he after he came to Calcutta University and when to come to the Calcutta University he wanted to stay he went to his cousin and the cousin was is almost the same friend the brother is Sharat Maharaj so both of them became very close friends and they started discussing and Sharat Maharaj also having the same type of mentality about the spirituality and all that in those days if we go back to the history of the Bengal particularly we find two types of mentality among the well-off educated families one the go for the wealth and name and fame pleasing that uh, our Britishers and to get the uh, different type of titles so that was one type another type was philosophical spiritual so cultural so that type was also this Sharat Maharaj and their family they were also very good particularly Sharat Maharaj so both the brothers they started discussing about the spirituality you know and they were very fond of Keshav Chandra Shain Keshav Chandra Shain in those days a great speaker and all young people used to go to listen to him and they used to get the inspiration from the Keshav Keshav mentioned many times in his lectures about Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. So two brothers, one day they were discussing, if Keshav is accepting him, we accept Keshav as our ideal. And Keshav accept him as he is, that means he will be so great and he is not very far. Let us go to Dakshineshwar. 
so both of them went to dakshineshwar by that way they were introduced you know what happened the moment these two brothers along with some other friends so young people together they made a plan to go they all went over there in those days they used to walk a lot they used to eat lot of sweets and they used to walk also lot so the and now it is we only eat sweet but never walk so <laughs> that is the problem you can look at me and can understand so <laughs> so now they reached over there look at this ramakrishna the moment he saw them he immediately recognized them not the other friends but these two brothers and afterward he said i saw you in the group of jesus christ that very moment he didn't disclose but he immediately recognized and he afterward he said moment i saw these two brothers i knew they are my inner circle and then the god whenever they come in the form of uh, a different human being like the rama or krishna they have a inner circle and outer circle the pip devotees are there they'll be supporting following but inner circle people will work for him they like the hanuman ji like the our panchapandava like that inner circle these two brothers the moment they enter and sri ramakrishna told you see you must develop spirituality before entering into the family life if you are entering into this worldly life then you won't be able to come up so in spiritual life so develop your spiritual life understand the complete the what is this spirituality then enter into this and you will be free from all the attachment of this worldly life i have seen a lady just recently came i i knew them from a long back i am not mentioning the places and uh, the husband wife and one son and they were really very really good now the she was having not no one but the son she used to feed him and these and that the son grew up and got a very good job now is a big officer he got married now the mother is crying and crying and crying and when i saw the mother she has become so lean and thin i told what her now my son is not with me and the, what she has gone with his wife you gave him to the marriage and with the wife won't she go or won't he go why you were crying like that every day three times the son will inquire a talk with his mother over phone even then she is not satisfied for whom i will cook and this man the, your husband giving you so much and at least cook for him <laughs> no my son is not so stop cooking and all this so this is called worldly attachment and she won't cook now this call world attachment and you suffer and i one day the husband requested me please talk to her i told why you are suffering you know because of your this temperament because you are suffering not that the your son will change his lifestyle because he will go in that way and better still he is with you not very far he is living in calcutta only and suppose your son was here in america then what so you have to understand oh yes that is whatever you say but still you know my son why should you so as a craziness has come and that is called worldliness when the sri ramakrishna is mentioning about the quagmire of the world he says this and then this young boy shashi asked so do you think that we should not marry immediately sri ramakrishna instead of giving the reply he told can you please bring that book from their shelf then sri ramakrishna was some having some book among those books there was a bible and he asked him to bring that book and he asked him to open that page where the jesus is giving the answer you knocks are there but one who is practicing that like me a blessed like the uh, could i am not quoting exactly the meaning of that that means he in immediately understood what the sri ramakrishna meant for that and about his reading about the persians he said you are 
unnecessarily wasting your energy and life is short if this much energy you were wasting on that learning the language then to read over that you will be finding nothing and whatever the little devotion that you are having that will also be lost so this exactly what we should understand we are all grown up people we are all matured people we know what actually is going on within our heart so that we must feel that this is my the way that i should go Sri Ramakrishna told him, and in those days he purchased Persian books in 20 rupees. He afterwards he mentioned, I threw all those books out. Only one sentence that Sri Ramakrishna told you are wasting your time. Because whatever little devotion that you are having, that will also go away. Some people may argue, why not? We should not read books and all. No, you should, you can, of course. But when you are starting your spiritual life, hold on to one and develop in that. And when you are convinced in that, then go anywhere. That ex again and again, Sri Ramakrishna said in the gospel that when a small tree is growing up, it should be covered, fencing should be given. Otherwise, it will be destroyed. Many things will come. But after that, it becomes a tree, strong tree, even the elephant won't be able to harm it. So first you grow your conviction in the God. If you like to follow in the path of devotion, follow that. Get that, get convinced, then no problem. Go and read about the books about the knowledge. In one sentence, immediately he understood. And he threw away. He started coming to Sri Ramakrishna. He is listening and following and mostly is to serve him. He came, Sri Ramakrishna passed away in 1886. He came in 1883, only three years. And continuously two years he used to come over there. Then a very challenging time came before him. Dharma Shankata, as they call. What was that? He was a very bright student. All through, he got the support from the government. He never spent any money. So, he used to get a... And now, it was the final exam. His father came and was pursuing, why you are here? You have to go back, you have to study, and after the exam, you come and serve your teacher. Then he looked at Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna didn't say anything. And he thought, master may not survive for a long time. Examination and may, may, it may wait, but not the service to my master. So he was meditating on that and then finally he decided, I am not going back for study. I will serve my master. And one day his father came. He was staying over there, serving the master. And one day his father came and he started criticizing Sri Ramakrishna before everyone. And then he said, this is my son, he is a fool, he is wasting his life serving this person. Immediately he was quietly listening. The Shashi Maharaj got up and he shouted like a lion, who is my father in this world? I am the pure Atman and this is my goal, the master that I see over here. I don't have any father, any mother. His father, he was tasting him. I appreciate. His father told, I wanted to see that you were truly devoted to your teacher. So that was the tasting and he was successful. Sri Ramakrishna was quietly observing, didn't mention anything between the conversation. And one day, this young boy came and told Sri Ramakrishna, whoever comes before you and talk to you, you touch them and do something. They are in great spiritual joy. They are all the time talking about that, but I don't feel anything. Then Sri Ramakrishna told, okay, I can give it to you, that. 
that experience, spiritual experience, but know it for certain. The moment you will get the experience, you won't be able to serve me. This young boy immediately said, I want to serve you. I don't bother about that type of experiences which will take me away from you. I like to be with you. This is Ramakrishna. That's why afterwards, when these young boys, they were taking the monastic vows. In the monastic vows, we burn all our, the life, uh, all any name and all other things we burn. And we take the new name and new family. That time, Swami Vivekananda, as because Sri Ramakrishna was not there, Swami Vivekananda gave him the name Ramakrishnananda. His whole ideology was Sri Ramakrishna and nothing else. And his brother, Sharat, what is his name? <coughs> Sharadananda. These two brothers, they got, so I really wondered, Sharad, Sharat Maharaj, Sharadananda ji, he was completely dedicated to Ma, mother. He, of course, he served Sri Ramakrishna. He got the teachings from Sri Ramakrishna. But his dedication was to Mother. Why, you know? One day when he was meditating, suddenly Sri Ramakrishna came and sat on his lap. And then got up and said, you will be able to serve the Holy Mother. Because you have to hold the wonderful responsibility. No one can do that. So he tasted and said, you should serve the mother. And mother means the primordial power, the Shakti. And so many different ways all those things are going on. The person who is serving the mother should understand who mother truly is. Among all the 16 disciples, Sri Ramakrishna only allowed Sardananda, Sharat Maharaj, to practice Tantra. Not even the Shashi Maharaj. Shashi Maharaj's father was a Tantric. But only Sardananda was allowed to practice Tantra. Why? Then only he could have that occult power to understand what mother truly is. Because mother was behaving so ordinarily, there was ample chances to misunderstand. Many of the very close associates also were making that mistake. Some of them expressed. So that was the story of Saradananda Ji. Ramakrishnananda, he served that much and then he refused to have the spiritual experience for which everyone was anchoring. He said, no, I want to serve you and I don't need anything. But Sri Ramakrishna is Sri Ramakrishna. One day, the Shashi Maharaj and uh, uh, serving so he needed something, so he was crossing. If you have gone to Dakshineshwar, the temple, that's Sri Ramakrishna's room, it, it is having two doors, in fact three doors. The, the Shashi Maharaj, to search something, he entered from one door and he was searching something and he was going out. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the, that small couch. He looked at him and said, what you were searching? Before he said anything, Sri Ramakrishna said, Everything is here, here, here. What you are searching is here. Then this young boy, Shashi, looked at Sri Ramakrishna. He saw the Brahman. He saw that blissfulness. And he experienced that blissfulness then and there. So this is how Sri Ramakrishna used to teach. And at the same time, he used to tell, when you are walking, you are making a lot of sound. You must be very gentle and quietly should walk. You know, some of the, mainly the male, they, when they walk, it makes a lot of sound. <laughs> One boy joined and he was from Kashmir, very well built. And when he was walking in Advaita Ashram, and he was walking, dum, 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 all this. Then one Swami told, look at him, he's uh, walking in so egoistic way. Then the boy went, <laughs> then afterwards when he was returning, we were sitting in one place, we could see that open space where he was walking. 
he went to some place and finished the work and when he was returning back he was walking on his toe <laughs> then <laughs> not making any sound then the swami see now he is walking like a thief <laughs> so, so he walked like a, then he, that boy asked me afterwards how do you should walk i told can you uh, because if i walk like this the swami is criticizing if i walk like this the swami is criticizing how i should walk then i told can you try on your hands because that <laughs> so anyway so this is the way the sri ramakrishna is to teach one day he was just tearing a cloth and it makes sound sri ramakrishna that time he was meditating and he was merged in the whole universe immediately he got up and said hey why you are making sound in that way you should not do it anything that you are doing do very patiently and quietly everything should be done promptly but at the same time correctly promptly but in a very very what's called a gentle way without disturbing sometimes some people they enter into our shrine and they'll go on talking that is the time they will, one should not making sound one should not whenever they are dragging the chairs is making sound one should not because these are the spiritual training how it is spiritual training because you are constantly alert what i should do every moment everywhere one day sri ramakrishna told have you brushed your teeth and cleaned your tongue to this ramakrishna nanda he said sir i was little late let me serve you food and then i will do that no never come like that i cannot touch food if people are gi giving in that way so so much of devotion whatever you give you have to give your complete whole hearted devotion that is the training he was going on having this ramakrishna nanda ji then one day so happened then ram sri ramakrishna he gave a wonderful record if if possible you can purchase that book written by shami chitonananda ji god lived with them and that is the direct disciples biographies wonderfully he has many, li, written the, the first book was the shami gambirananda ji but the english is mainly mainly indian english and information some of the informations that whatever he could collect that he has given chitonananda ji recently so he got lot many informations and the english is just american english and very lucid so you will like it and there he has given the whole account that the ramakrishna nanda ji mentioned how sri ramakrishna passed away and after that he used to worship sri ramakrishna as if he is leaving he never stopped worshiping he went on worshiping and when uh, some of the relics that one of the direct disciple of sri ramakrishna householder disciple ramchandra datta he took and he was keeping that in an urn and they were putting that on, as inside the earth and they were throwing the earth ramakrishna nanda ji cried why you are throwing earth so forcefully don't you think that sri ramakrishna is getting hurt slowly you must give it slowly the feeling everybody started crying seeing is uh, the feeling shami vivekananda he was vedantin he said we don't want those relics give it to the devotees rather we will take small a portion and eat it so that our body will be the temple of god ramakrishna nanda ji secretly took out some portion the devotees they were giving the money and these young boys hardly 24 the eldest one was 24 so who will listen to them so but ramakrishna nanda secretly took out some and that is now in belur mart and from there little little that has spread it all over in different ashrams we are too, we too are also having some of our swami must have brought it from there that is the relics of ma sarada swami ji thakur 
we are having. After the diksha, I touch that uh, relics. Otherwise, I don't take it out. And only on the nowadays the our Thakur Ma Shami Ji's Titi Puja days, whoever comes. But most of the people they don't understand. But anyway, no. So this is the relics he kept, and afterwards they were wandering here and there. But Ramakrishna Nandaji never went anywhere. Why? Thakur is here. I have to cook food for him. How can I go out? Afterwards, Swami Vivekananda said he was the mother. He used to constantly hold that. And when all these young brothers are going out, Sri Ramakrishna, exactly before his passing away, he hold the hand of Swami Vivekananda and said, you have to take care of these young boys. Three times he mentioned. All others who were there, they could feel that Sri Ramakrishna is giving the, the leadership to Vivekananda. They accepted Vivekananda. And what Vivekananda will do, because Vivekananda was not earning. And at that time, his father was a very rich man, but he passed away. And the relatives also took away all those properties. And Sri Ramakrishna himself came and he dictated one of his great followers, householder devotee, Shurindranath Mitra. What you were doing here? Sleeping? <laughs> he appeared in the dream. And all my children are wandering here and there. They are not having any room, any place to lie on. Go and purchase some place. And whatever money you used to spend for me, give it to them. They should be in one place. Next morning, Shurindranath ran to Narendranath and told, You brother, you see some house. I like to purchase that. And you should be there. And 10 rupees what he will purchase. So the monthly 10 rupees, they hired a house as a two-storied house, but the one story went inside the earth and full of snakes and others, haunted, dilapidated. Even then they had to pay 10 rupees per month as rent in those days. And they were very happy. Seeing that other brothers, they commented, but this is a haunted house. Swamiji told, haunted? Haunted by ghost. But we are Danas, that means Danava. Danava, they are, when the Brahmins are dead, but not get liberation, they become Danavas like that. Mm -hmm. So we are Danavas. The, what the, the ghost will do to us, they are afraid of Danavas. So we are Danavas, we'll live over there. They used to live over there. Days after days, if you read that, uh, oh, wonderful, uh, there's the days that they spent, they were having only one cloth. Wearing that, they used to go out. Otherwise, in land clothes, bare body, nothing was there. About the food, never cared. They will go and see any food is there. If not, they will drink water and meditate. Meditate and meditate. If you see their bodies emaciated, but bright eyes. So, one day, when he, they were four brothers, they went out to, uh, for begging. But you know, Bengal, they have seen the Tantrics, they have seen the Vaishnavas. Dashanavi Sampradaya Sanyashi, they never seen. The Vedantin Sanyashi, they have not seen. So they used to think, why these young boys, and most of them are from Calcutta, and their parents are educated and rich. And they are also, majority of them were from the Calcutta University. All they knew them. Why they are doing over here, what they are doing, they couldn't understand. Whenever they go, they see they are sitting only, close their eyes. Or they are reading some books, they will never understand because in Sanskrit, all the scriptures. So that way, they were not accepted in the society. These four, they went to the whole neighborhood, couldn't get anything. They came back and said, nothing today. So they again drank water and sat. Ram Krishnanandaji secretly went out and he went to his known person. He said, brother, he addressed him, Priyo Bhai, brother dear, today we could not collect anything, not a single morsel. For us, we don't care. 
but our Guru Maharaj, he will be without food, give little food, rice, one spoon of ghee and a little, few potatoes. He gave him, but the other, the family members didn't like, but still he gave him, blessed that soul. Ramakrishna Ji brought it, boiled it, applied that without salt even, because salt was costly in those days. He made small, small rolls of that, offered to Thakur, and when the brothers were meditating, he went, pressed their mouth open and gave one one that roll into their mouth. Every one was satisfied. So that was the way then Shami Vivekananda came to America, slowly, slowly things started taking shape and then when he is returning back, in the meantime one thing happened, as the, because there was no other book, he used to read Chaitanya Charitamrita. And after reading that, he thought that I should also practice vegetarian food. He became, and what vegetarian? Most of the time there was no food. And even then, he used to practice vegetarian food. Sri Ramakrishna appreciated him and told him better, you should do that. And he was a very good pujari. He used to get the information to how to perform puja and he will do that minutely. Meditation was in his nature. Reci recitation of the scriptures, he was perfect. He was a perfect Brahman. When Swami Vivekananda was returning, the whole South, the Madras, they were there. Then they requested him, Swamiji, start an ashram over here also. We will give you land. We will give you money to build the ashrama. You send one of your Guru Bhai. Because there was no disciples, only the ten Guru Bhai. Swamiji said, I will send you one Brahman. Much, much better Brahman than all the Brahmins that you are having in South India. So orthodox, so perfect in world rituals, and so perfect in meditation. This is a wonderful way he is telling. Thinking Ramakrishna Nandaji. He never consulted with Ramakrishna Nandaji. And Ramakrishna Nandaji's life was centered with only with Thakur. Look at it. And that is called. Shangham Sharanam Gachami. He came back and told Shashi, I give them war. You should go. Except you, there is no one that they will be able to accept. Because they are very orthodox, the Madras people. You should go and show them what is true orthodoxy. Without any argument, how come you have not consulted with me and all that, without any argument. He immediately ap accepted Swamiji's thought, that order. Noreen is the leader, immediately accepted. So sometimes some people they say, why the General Secretary will say like this and you have to follow? They don't understand. This is the tradition. Whoever there on the chair, whether he is senior or junior to me, it doesn't matter. The chair, who will be sitting over there, whatever he will say, we will do that. Otherwise, what dedication? Dedication is this. No argument, good, bad, that he will understand. So that is the way immediately he left. He was so much attached to that Sri Ramakrishna's the worship. And when he used to worship, at that time the Khandana Bhava Bandana, the song was not there. They used to only sing that uh, Shivanam and uh, because of the Kashi that, that Shivanam used to do and lastly Jai Guru Maharaj Ji Ki Jai that was there and finally when he used to do that to Arati he used to dance in ecstasy all people whoever observed that Arati they used to get that experience of the spirituality great joy so Whenever they got the opportunity, they used to come only to observe that Arati. He was went to over there, he started. But you know, people, those who were habituated or 
heard many times Swami Vivekananda, it was very difficult for them to accept Ramakrishna Nandaji. Now our, the same thing has come that our brother Sarva Priya, wherever he goes, people are not calling us. Well, no, no, if Sarva Priya is coming, then also he can come like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so sometimes he used to go and he never found anyone in that. They asked him to go and they were there, but he used to go. But the dedication, he went over there to give the class, he saw no one around, he opened the book, started reading for one hour, gave the discourse completely, and then closed the book, offered pranam, and came out. When the people asked, why you are, there is no one, to whom you are talking, to Thakur, I never talk to people, this is spirituality. One day, he wanted to feed some people, there is nothing. Many, many miracles happened. Then he became very angry with Sri Ramakrishna. The other people who were there in Madras Mott, from distance they saw his pacing up and down before the shrine, looking at Sri Ramakrishna, and as if he is having a very you know, hot exchange of words with him. And then he showed that I am not going to eat today anything. Because today is your birthday, I like to cook food and whoever will come, we will distribute and nothing is there. When he was thinking in that way and fighting with Thakur, suddenly one gentleman came and with great politeness he said, Sir, I have little money, can I give it to you as donation? He said, okay, little money? He gave lot of money. And then he burst in tears. He ran to the market, purchased all those, cooked, and whoever came, he fed them and told Sri Ramakrishna, you do everything, why I fool think that I am doing? This happened many a times. His devotion, we will conclude by saying this, to Sri Ramakrishna, that was in the first mod. That's called, that's our Alam Baranagar Mart. Still that ashram is there. Now they have purchased and they have developed. Of course that old building, nothing is there. That Baranagar Mart, he had a small room. He kept the Sri Ramakrishna's photo, they used to worship. One day, he fried some luchi. Because Sri Ramakrishna was very fond of luchi. So he wanted to offer that luchi to Thakur. Swamiji, he was sitting there, he saw, hey, I am hungry, give me the luchi to me. <laughs> then he said, luchi, uh, first I offered to Guru Maharaj, then after he is eating, Ma Thaksha, then I will give it to you. Swamiji said, I am hungry, I am telling you, and you are giving to that photo, what he has done. We were in very good position, and now you see, we are all beggars. We could get so good food in the house. He brought us over here and nothing we are getting. So we need not, need not to feed him. <laughs> and I am going to throw your Thakur out. This type of Thakur we don't need. And when he, Swamiji, almost going over there to take out the picture, Ramakrishna Nandaji jumped, pounced on him. And he forced him out. Yes, in between and our Adbhutananda ji, Latu Maharaj, he could not understand. He got up and said, Narin, why you are fighting like this? We will get the prasad, have some patience, let him offer. Then Swamiji shouted at him, you fool, stop. You sit over there. I am going to throw out the Thakur now today. And the Luchi he will be sitting over here and eating and while we are not... Ramakrishna Nandaji stood over there. He told, if you have to do that, you have to kill me and then only you can touch. Then Swamiji laughed, burst in laughter and he said, see, this is called Guru Bhakti. The Guru Bhakti, if you like to see, look at Shashi. So they, he embraced. And then afterwards, Latumar is commenting, 
I never knew that Noreen could act in that way. I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking that he is truly angry. And his last days came, Shashi Maharaj came back to Calcutta. And before his passing away, he wanted to see the mother. That time, Girish Chandra Ghosh composed a beautiful song. And he asked one gentleman, can you sing that song before me? He started singing. And he was listening to that song and slowly, slowly he was going into the trance, into that deep meditation. Then afterwards he said, can you sing another song? He started singing. And they found that his hair all over the body they stood on end. Thakur has come, Ma has come, Shamiji has come, everybody is in front of me. And those who were there, they could also feel the presence of the God. And then suddenly he passed away. He passed. Thakur passed in August, he too in the August. Thakur passed in 1.02, he passed in 1 o'clock in the night the early morning. That is Shashi Maharaj. The Shashi Maharaj, Ramakrishna Nandaji, his love for Sri Ramakrishna, there are so many stories. One day it is raining, everybody is sleeping. Shashi Maharaj suddenly got up and said, oh, what Thakur is doing? So much of rain. He went and saw the water is leaking and one one drop is falling on the photo. All through night, he hold the umbrella over there standing. He didn't even remove the photo. Why? It's not photo. It is Sri Ramakrishna sleeping. If I take him from there, he will break the sleep. So you are holding that umbrella. So th we learn two, three things. One, dedication and love for the Guru. <laughs> Complete faith on the Guru. And the Guru is God. Sri Ramakrishna is the Guru. Sri Ramakrishna is Guru Maharaj and apparently all other things are nothing but the Guru Bhakti because it is God that I am loving, I am serving, I am following. Me being here and there for the spiritual knowledge, that is another lesson we should not do. Hold on to one and continue with that. Without thinking, Oh, those people are listening to the wonderful words. They must be uh, 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 proceeding towards the God fast. No, not like that. And third, the devotion with the emotion. If we can apply to God, we get all that we want. Om Shanti. Shanti, 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 Shanti Hari Om. Hari.